talk about this thing that's in my brain It keeps me from wanting to go on But I want some game back to the We The Patriots podcast. I'm your host, Sal Asante, and today we're going to be diving into a topic that is really reshaping our world, especially today and here in America, and that's free speech in the digital age. Now, we're in an era where simple tweet, a TikTok, um, a little reel on Instagram or Facebook, that stuff can spark up just a firestorm of comments, retweets, posts coming back at you. And it seems like the only thing that, at least in my view, that we have tethering us together as a society is our founding documents. So the first thing that I wanted to go into was, let's first and foremost, let's just read the First Amendment for anybody that doesn't or doesn't know or hasn't read it in a little bit. Let's just read it. So the First Amendment to the Constitution provides that Congress make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise. It protects freedom of speech, the press assembly and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Now, obviously extremely important to that amendment is the second amendment that follows it, which is the second amendment giving the right to the citizens to bear arms. No caveats to that. All right. Now, the first amendment has some language here and it also has a few different pillars, right? We're talking four pillars. We have the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, and the freedom of the right to petition the government. Okay, so we have four different redresses here. And let's go into how we're really seeing it today. So we're at a crossroads. Let's just be honest about it. Fellow patriots and people who believe in the Constitution of the United States, the landscape of free speech is changing rapidly, and it's influenced by people out of our bounds, a few key players, and... Uh, especially over the past couple of weeks, you have seen really just an immense, immense rise in what I would say is hate speech. And uh, I mean, we got to we got to make our own decision as to whether it's good or not for the country. Let's just take a deeper dive. So how this all started was that a few days ago on TikTok, we had a huge controversy come out. And what happened was it seemed like a bunch of younger Americans, younger white people, I will point out, were finding Osama bin Laden's letter to America circa 2002. Now, this is not to mention all the letters that were before and after the letter in 2002. Um, the, you have to go read it for yourself. There's obviously quite a bit of double speak, hate, hate speech in that own letter, if you want to call it that. And like I said, go read that for yourself. But what it sparked on TikTok was just a rabid, rabid onslaught of younger Americans, it seemed, that were really siding with the terrorists, saying that 9-11 was a good thing to happen, that our citizens deserve to die on that day, um, and kind of siding with terrorism in general. And what that bled into on X, formerly known as Twitter, and headed now, of course, by Elon Musk, if you have not heard about this, why it's even called X. Now, what happened over there was Elon was commenting over on a post. Now, how this bleeds in from the TikTok conversation, there was a massive amount of people after this original circulation of Bin Laden's letter that made the logical jump, it seemed, from Bin Laden to Hitler, okay, supporting two of the, you know, I would say most evil people in American history or just in world So as you support two of the most evil people looked at in history, somebody posted this is Charles Weber on Twitter. Uh, on X, we have CWBOCA posted to the cowards hiding behind the anonymity of the internet and posting Hitler was right. You got something you want to say. And I will say, he's not lying about it, okay? This stuff did happen. I saw quite a bit of this. I mean, I was meaning to show you guys post, and it looks like it got deleted, but I at least commented on it. I had to say something. Um, I remember back in the day when I was listening to Dan Carlin. So any of you history fans out there, anybody like me, Dan Carlin is an awesome source for, at least for conversation, right? If you're not going to believe every statistic or every talking point that he comes up with, you're absolutely going to at least trust the man for wanting to expand, right? Expand upon the ideas of regular thought. All right. And all I did was the the man that I commented against, like I said, his, his tweets deleted. So 
or he's got a suspended account now, but he said Uncle Abe was right when he was ta- <laughs> talking about this guy. And this guy, Jake Shields, if you haven't seen him on Twitter, he seems to be um, just pushing for a very pro-Palestinian, pro-Islamic agenda, and it seems odd coming from him. I've never really seen his account, and it's just blown up. Um, but in response to all this, like I said, Charles Weber posted that people that they're hiding do you have something you want to say why don't you say it to our faces is is what he came out and said um we have an account responding the artist formerly known as eric okay jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them i'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest shit about western jewish populations coming to the disturbing realization that those hordes of minions that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. It's quite a convoluted statement. And what the CEO of Twitter decided to say was, you have said the actual truth. (laughs) Just all I could say is that's one way to put it. All right. Um, So... In response to this, what ended up happening was Twitter had a whole bunch actually had a whole bunch of companies pulling their pulling out their advertisements for X, and this was due. I, I found it so funny. They said this was due to a anti-Semitic tweet. Of all things, that's what they ended up picking it at. They didn't even say anti-Islamic, anti-Palestinian, nothing like that. You gotta just love love the way that our our age finds its way to pick its bones, right? And the first, of course, it started with IBM, of all things. All right, so all this stuff is really bringing into debate. Like, I will show you guys my Twitter feed here. It is, it is all basically uh, Palestinian uh, posts, people saying, uh, equating Jews to Nazis. It is really just a... It, it is quite a place and look at as i stumble upon this we got a free speech post from elon musk it, it's just it ta- it's how you believe it it is really really how you get into it how you believe it all right and one of the one of the key things that has really affected just our perception of this in in our time is how these algorithms how these different websites can promote just the tiniest little thing and spark outrage right so you had these two platforms both x tiktok twitter tiktok so far instagram stayed out of the battle it's just been a cesspool the whole time i I have to say but these two things all you have is one different algorithm or the other that just sparks up one day and you have just battlegrounds going in the comment section and i can't help but think that this is negative for the country right but is it better that you have police speech that you're not allowed to say what you're supposed to say or what you want to say right you have cases now on campuses where you have big bullies like ben shapiro going to campuses and starting fights and picking debate battles with people and then when he doesn't like their opinion saying they should be banned from campus right you're not allowed to hold these views that Palestine deserves to exist, right? Do a little bit of research. Go look into the institution of Israel, all right? And if you want to get the data that is out there and you want to learn a little bit about not only the history but the entirety of this conflict and how many lies are being told on both sides, it's horrendous, okay? It's just it's just the truth, okay? And this whole this whole, it's crazy that this whole thing this whole issue in the Middle East over with Israel, with Palestine, with all these countries involved, getting involved now, that this is the one that sparked the huge debate and what could turn into just a catastrophe out there. And it wasn't what's going on in Ukraine. Meanwhile, this is all still going, right? Let's just take a step back here. Now, as we take a step back, I want to reel it back to a conversation that we've had and one of the reasons that this episode today may be one of our last to be held on YouTube. Now, the reason that we have all of our stuff, right? The reason that we have with patriotsmedia.com, the reason that we have subscriptions, the reason that we have the stories, because we're pretty sure that companies like YouTube, companies like Google, right? Companies like Apple, they don't really like us, 
okay? They don't really like our opinion. And it's not to say, like, like to be honest, I don't really think I pick any bones. But even if I did, if somebody wants to censor us, now, that's where we have a problem, okay? And it's for this reason that I really heavily suggest you go vis- visit us over at our, our website over at wethepatriotsmedia.com. Go check it out. Go get a little bit of access into behind the scenes. Get some other prior knowledge, right? Maybe get a little bit of deeper dive, stuff that we don't want to talk about on YouTube. Because to be honest, I think that we're going to make a, sh- a shift. We're going to make a shift totally to uh, Spotify, considering that they are doing video. They've never knocked us for anything. And not only that, it feels like we have a little bit more free speech. And it's a really big pressing moment that we do this now. And I say this now because recently, I believe this is hugely important. And this is because the FCC just recently reinstated rules going back to 2017, going back to Obama administration rules. And this is the FCC controlling broadband internet access. And we are... I, I mean, I at least I'm pretty sure that they're going to become cracking down on us harder than they ever have before, uh, especially leading into the 2024 election. So I just implore you all to go help us out, help us intertwine these ideas a little bit better, make this community stronger and grow it. Go spread the word. Go let your friends know that we are bringing out the light, trying to get you guys a new conversation and just a little bit of thinking into what could be coming down the road. All this stuff reminds us back to our basically our start, right? 2020 election, right after COVID was basically a huge thing as vaccines were getting rolled out left and right. And it seemed like we were the only ones to stand up and say, "Mm, I'm not going to get it. And we just came out and said it. Now we got trouble for this. We got knocks on YouTube for videos that didn't even exist, right? This stuff did not exist on YouTube, yet they felt the need to tell us that we were wrong in this. Now, I can never, never forget what happened during COVID, right? It's one of the biggest things, one of the biggest issues that we stress and the reasons that we got into podcasting in the first place, me and Andrew, right? It tested the limits of free speech right then and there when it went all the way up to the president, even condemning people, right? He declared war on the pandemic, and then he started ending up going, <laughs> going out and saying the unvaccinated the minority can cause a lot of damage and they are right when it came down to coercing people with their jobs saying that they would not be able to retain employment or you can only get employed you can only get this job if you have a vaccine right just remember what they can do right especially in this era like right now of course looking back on covid it was disgusting seeing what people would say that we are we are the heathens we are the the people stopping society from progressing because we won't get a jab in the arm meanwhile i have complete and utter control over what me and my doctor talk about and our decisions that we make in that office has nothing to do with anybody else right but the way that they look at us people like me is is a lower right and when they get those reins of power right just never forget especially as you're seeing information now coming out january 6 is fully on tape and good bad and ugly and you're just seeing how differently normal human beings view the event than people who are wielding those those reins of power it's it's just shocking and what we need to take away from this is that your free speech rights especially here in america your first amendment rights your ability to get together on those college campuses and group together and have rational discussions right all this is starting to get chipped away at piece by piece different facets of this first amendment are getting blocked away right free speech is no longer that written in stone amendment it it looks very fluid to these people in power and they want to use it i guarantee you to control your lives all right now it's on us to make sure that we band together everybody who is of like mind here or does not agree that there should be any sort of hold back on free speech right the best way to combat this is combat bad speech with good speech, right? Hate speech gets corrected with love speech, right? It does not get corrected by banning the hate speech. Um, you're just going to ban, like, what what happened here with, if for looking back on Osama's letter, for instance, as soon as it started getting picked up and all these all these kids started finding it and they, they really wanted to blow it up, as soon as that happened, immediately you had outlets taking it down, acting like, you can't just look this letter up and find it in our Congress records, 
right? You're not going to have the ability to find out that Osama bin Laden worked with our government previously, right? Him having that inside knowledge, you can take it so many different ways. And one thing I would say you can take it is you can't take it off the internet, especially not now that it exists. There's too many platforms and we need to keep it that way, right? One way for you guys to do that, like I said, you can go out and support us at wethepatriotsmedia.com. Over there, you'll be able to find our shop. You can support us there. You can become a member. You can get access to premium content. And not only that, you'll help us keep growing, keep doing the research and building our team up, building this studio up. And like I said, getting better information out to you, the people, being able to participate in this world is a it is a crazy mess and it is turning into a maze that is hard to travel. Now, all I could say is thank you guys for joining me today in exploring our intricate world. Now, free speech is, like I said, is no longer that set in stone and it is tough to navigate this stuff. I implore you guys to go and take away all that you can. Go research. I will post the links here in the description. Now, remember, our words matter. Make sure we use them. Make sure we're going to be posting. Don't be afraid to speak out. Right? Don't be afraid to use your voice out there on X, on TikTok. If we're using these platforms, use them for good. Don't just sit there and complain about the bad. Use these platforms for good. Right? These are what we have in this era. Don't be afraid to utilize what we have to make sure that we turn this tide around. Because I'll tell you right now, if we have a nation of people who are agreeing with Osama bin Laden's letter, we do not have a nation much longer. I wish I were the fucking state I wanna be something, not nothing Trapped inside my dream and I'm running Running away from these demons But the feeling's so good, I'ma keep dreaming All those of you who stayed out this long, I love you. Guys are awesome. Peace out.